Hi everyone, I'm Sarah and this is Budget Sew, so, where we create stylish fashionable looks as inexpensively as possible. Today is December 16th and the 16th day of Vlogmas. Vlogmas is a holiday event where YouTube creators such as myself post a video every day in December leading up to Christmas. Today we're going to make a Christmas pickle. I'll explain that in just a moment, but first, a quick note before we get started. Today, I'm wearing McCall's 5136. The link to the video with that sew along is right here at the top of the screen. The Christmas pickle is a lesser known Christmas tradition. It's a Christmas tree ornament in the shape of a pickle that's hidden on a Christmas tree, with the finder receiving either a gift, a reward, or good fortune for the next year. There are a number of different stories attributed to this tradition, including an origination in Germany, but this theory has since been discounted. It is now thought to be a German-American tradition created in the late 19th century. It's been suggested that the origin of the Christmas pickle may have been developed for marketing purposes by Woolworths in the 1890s to coincide with the importation of glass Christmas tree decorations from Germany. Woolworths was the first company to import these types of decorations into the United States in 1890, and glass-blown decorative vegetables were imported from France from 1892 onwards. I'm not sure where this Christmas tradition came from, but I like the idea of the pickle finder receiving good fortune. I thought that this would be a fun new tradition to adopt, but I didn't have a pickle ornament. Rather than buy one, I found a free pickle ornament sewing pattern that uses three pieces of green felt and a bunch of French knots. I'll post the link to the pattern in the description box of this video. So let's make a pickle ornament. It's really no big deal. For this project, you will need a six by nine inch scrap of green felt, small scraps of white and black felt, pink and green embroidery floss, one ounce of fiber fill stuffing, baker's twine or string, and craft glue. Green seed beads are optional. My first step was to cut two pickle sides and one pickle center from my green felt. I bought my felt in a package of 45 sheets, approximately six by six inches, for $3 from Dollarama, a Canadian dollar store. There were five sheets of each of the nine colors, including yellow, red, pink, blue, white, black, light green, dark green, and orange. You may remember this felt from my Sew the Queen's Corgi Pillow, where I applicate a corgi onto a pillow. The link to the McCall's Craft Sew the Queen's Corgi Pillow is at the top of the screen. Then I cut out two eyes from white felt and two pupils from black felt. I also used this felt in another project. I appliqued three white felt hearts onto a red sweater. The link to my how to add a felt applique video is at the top of the screen. Then I pinned the two pickle sides together and hand stitched along the outer edge from point A to point B, leaving an opening as marked. I have plenty of felt left over for other projects, such as McCall's 6482. This pattern really makes me smile. McCall's 6482 was published in 2011 and is an owl pillow and quilt pattern. Pillows A and B are 14 by 14 inches or 36 by 36 centimeters. Quilt C is 34 by 45 inches or 87 by 115 centimeters. All views have a contrast back, bands, and appliques. My mom bought this pattern for me for 25 cents at the Optimus thrift store in Lucan, Ontario. 
The link to the video in which this pattern is featured is in the description box of this video. I used a running stitch to sew the two pickle sides together. I used a lovely emerald green serger thread that I bought at Fabricland for $1.99 to sew my pickle. Serger thread is a bit thinner than the regular thread, but it was the best match to the felt. I used this thread for my Simplicity 899 pants. The link to that video is at the top of the screen. Then I marked points A and B with my tailor's chalk on the pickle center so that it could be lined up correctly with the pickle sides. Then I pinned the pickle center between the two pickle sides, matching up points A and B. If you don't have any green felt, you could use green fabric instead. Your pickle doesn't have to be identical to the pattern, make it uniquely yours. I think that a green fabric with a very tiny pattern would look great too. Your pickle would have its own personality on your Christmas tree. You could even say, it's a designer pickle. I used a lot of pins on this step because of the curved edges of the pickle sides. I wanted to make sure everything lined up correctly. Then I hand stitched the pickle center to the pickle sides using my green serger thread. I used a running stitch for these seams as well. You can use a sewing machine, but I was enjoying the time sewing this ornament. I had the Christmas carols playing in the background and was singing along. Before I continue with the Christmas pickle, please like and share this video with your friends and family. I would love to help others sew and refashion on a budget and troubleshoot their favorite patterns. I also love sharing the treasure that I find at thrift shops. If you'd like to see more from Budget Sew, please subscribe and make sure that the bell is on so you receive a notification when I release a new video. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Budget Sew. Now back to the Christmas craft. I clipped the curves and then turned the pickle right side out. My next step was to stuff the pickle. I used Mountain Mist Fiber Loft 100% polyester fiber fill that I bought in a one pound or 454 gram bag for $3.99 at Value Village thrift stores. One other project that I used this felt for was my Festive Fox Family Felt Ornaments. The link to that video is at the top of the screen. Then I ladder stitch the opening closed with my coordinating thread. I have a joke for you. What do you call a frozen pickle hanging from the roof? An ice pickle. Okay, one more. How do pickles enjoy a day out? They relish it. Next, it was time to add the details to the pickle. I used my white glue to stick the pupils to the eyes and then the eyes to the pickle. Another idea is if you don't have felt for the eyes, 
you could use some buttons or embroider the eyes onto the pickle. My next step was to add a smile to my pickle. The instruction said, embroider a smile with pink embroidery floss using split stitch. I wasn't sure how to do that stitch, so I looked in my Cruel Embroidery book. It said this is an exceptionally good outline stitch and is used to outline satin stitch. Make a stitch by bringing the needle up through the fabric and back down again at the desired length. Next, bring the needle up through the middle of the stitch, splitting the stitch at the center. Insert the needle down through the fabric at the same stitch length to start a second stitch. I tried it, but then decided to do a back stitch instead for my smile. If you don't want to embroider, try cutting out a smile from red or pink felt and gluing it to the pickle. My next step was to add bumps to my pickle. The instruction said, embroider French knots in a random pattern all over the pickle. It also suggested instead of French knots, use seed beads or dots of fabric paint to create bumps on your pickle. I chose to use green seed beads that I bought for a dollar at Dollar Tree in Exeter, Ontario to make my pickle extra special. Shortly after filming this video, my beads jumped out of their original packaging and went all over the inside of my craft bag. I put them in another sealed container so that this does not happen again. My final step was to create a hanger for the pickle. I used thick green thread that I bought at Value Village. It was included in a big bag of old thread on wooden spools that I bought for $1.99. Here is the finished Christmas pickle! Christmas pickle with me. Please like and share this video with your friends and family. I love sharing my new, vintage, and out of print sewing patterns and my tips, tricks, quick fixes, and even my mistakes when sewing along with you. I also love sharing my wonderful fabric finds that I thrifted from charity shops as well as brand new fabric online and in store. If you'd like to see more from Budget Sew, Please subscribe and press the bell so you receive a notification when I release a new video. If you'd like to stay up to date with Budget Sew, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Budget Sew. Thanks for watching. See you next time.